Improving is really hard, but hey, you read the title of this video, you're here to get better at Splatoon 3. I'm a pro player and I've played since the first game. I've been to Nintendo's North American Championships a few times in Splatoon 2 and have a few notable tournament wins. So I want to give you my top 10 tips that I think will help you out the most. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to catch more guide content in the future. So let's get started. The first tip is pretty generic, but it's to practice a lot. Obviously, if you want to get good at something, you have to practice. And that doesn't mean just getting on the game. It means getting on the game with the notion that you're playing to improve and get better. If you're playing to improve, just going on turf war while you're talking with your friends and half paying attention to the game isn't going to help you. Generally, the place you're going to want to go is ranked because that's where you're going to find people with a close skill level to your own as you practice and improve. I know rank can be scary, but it's just part of the improvement process. You have to try to play against people who are close or slightly better than you, because that's what's going to help you get experience to get better. All right, though, we're setting up to practice. What should we do? Number two, it's important to warm up. Now, I know a lot of people might be thinking, really? Warm up? Like, testing range drills? Do I really need that? Yes, you really do. Before you jump in a rank, it's important to warm up your hands. Just get ready to press the buttons, turning at the right angle. You'll be surprised, but it does take a little bit to get used to and to just feel the motion again. The important part when warming up is to do realistic warm-ups. Move around a little bit, flick to hit dummies, don't just go and practice 360s that are never going to be practical. If you really want to spend more time warming up too, you can use Turf War to be able to warm up a little bit more against normal players before hopping into rank. All right, so that's the basics and getting ready done. But what about your own playstyle or weapons? Most people are probably trying a lot of different weapons since the game came out pretty recently. And that's perfectly fine. It's nice to get used to and learn everything. But eventually you want to try to narrow things down a bit. There's just such a large variety of weapons and roles in the game that it becomes a bit unrealistic to try to get good at all of them at the same time. 1% of people can still do it, but it's not something I'd super recommend. You should be trying to figure out what specific weapons and role you like, something like an aggressive player who likes shooters, or a defensive player who likes chargers and bows, for example. I won't go too in-depth about the specific roles in the game and the weapons in them, because honestly, that's a topic worth its own video I hope to do soon. But basically, you want to try to figure out what your role is and narrow it down to a few weapons you like the most in that role. That way, you're practicing things that are similar to each other and in a smaller weapon pool, rather than trying to learn a bunch of different weapons and playstyles all at the same time. So next up, something that can help you both in narrowing down a weapon pool or in trying to get better at your weapon is watch other people who play it, especially higher or pro level players. You can find a bunch of the links in the description of this video for different weapons you might want to check out. And I'm not trying to say that you should copy their playstyle, but you'll see how they play, what they do well, and it'll help you learn a lot more about how that weapon plays or things that you might not be doing that could help you improve. Honestly, this is something that even helps me. I'll watch other players who play my weapon, even though I have over five years of experience with Range Blaster, for example. There will still be small things that certain people do that you might want to implement. Having that extra perspective can really help out a lot. Speaking of watching players, do you you know who else you should watch? Yourself. Look back at your own gameplay. Whenever you play in the moment, you're very focused on what you're doing. Being able to go back, pause, rewind, or think about something will help you notice a lot of things that you just don't see in the moment. The game's got an in-place replay mode that gives you a ton of data on matches you play. You should use it. Being able to take time where you're not playing and watch yourself back is incredibly helpful, way more than most people give it credit for, and I highly recommend it. Apart from just learning about yourself, though, you also have to learn a lot about the game. Splatoon 3 has a lot of things going, and the more you can learn and understand, the better it is. How do specials work? How do subs work? How do main weapons work? Map layouts? How do they change based on the modes? There is a lot to learn, and while it can seem daunting and it will take time, it's important not to just ignore it, but to take time to really think about it. Even if I don't play Rapid Blaster, for example, if I learn a little bit about it, I'll realize that it has a really hard time dealing with people who get really close to it. So regardless of what I play, that's something I can keep in mind for whenever I'm fighting that weapon. Another instance could be learning stages. Maybe you'll notice a really nice flank route that's a bit harder to see, and you might 
might want to play that spot, or find a cool sniper position you didn't realize by going through the map by yourself. There is a lot of small things, so keep an open mind and be willing to just look at different parts of the game and try to learn more about it. The more you know, the more informed your decision making can be in a match. The next two points are both about mentality, starting with taking breaks. You can burn yourself out by playing the game too much or too long, or continuing to play when you're not feeling good or on a losing streak, etc. There is a point where you've played too much and any more is not gonna help you and might even do the opposite. I know this can sound simple, but when you're doing bad, a lot of times it's very easy to get tunneled into needing to do better and not letting yourself stop until you start doing better, which sometimes just doesn't happen and it can leave you feeling really crappy. Some days just aren't gonna be your day or sometimes you need to do other things. Well-placed breaks will help you with improving, not hurt you. You don't need to play this game every day to become good at it. Next up, I want to talk about arguably the hardest part of improving at anything, which is these rough, long periods where you feel like you're not improving at all. These are basically what I like to call your roadblocks, where you're not sure what you can do to get better, and it basically gets you really stumped and you feel really down about it because you don't think you're making progress. And when you don't think you're making progress, it can get really demotivating. Honestly, what helped me out a lot with this is the chart, which is about improvement in painting, but you can apply it to anything, which basically measures a few things. Your ability to see, your actual technical skill, your perceived technical skill, which leads to these areas of frustration. Basically, there will be points where you think you are worse than you actually are, or you are struggling to see areas you can improve in. But once you work through those, you do make that improvement there are gonna be these rough periods. It's inevitable and it's okay. It might take you a lot of time to get out of it, but it's important not to get defeated and hate yourself for it, but to take time to really think what's going on, maybe approach things from a different angle or just give it the necessary time it needs. I know this is a bit abstract, but trust me, if you grind this game, you will hit this period at one point or another, probably multiple times. And I think it's really important to know that this is just an unavoidable part of improving at something and you We'll get through it. All right, last two tips. Let's go back to more in-game stuff. First of all is your gear sets. Now gear in this game has a lot of customization in terms of what abilities you can run and there's a lot of different ones for specific weapons. My biggest advice about gear is to be open about it. You may have a set you really like and it might turn out that that set isn't optimal or maybe you want a different set or maybe it needs to change or maybe you're using a set for multiple weapons and in reality you should have different sets for different weapons. Honestly it's good to look into better players and see what they run on their weapons and and why. You don't need to copy, but if, for example, you see all the top level Splatling players are using run speed on it, then maybe it's something that you should use and why exactly do they use it. Don't be afraid to change or experiment with your gear to find out what's best for you or what's best to run on your weapons. It's okay to have multiple different sets or to try different things. There's a lot of optimization when it comes to gear and the worst thing you can do is to just lock yourself in with whatever gear you make and be completely unwilling to change it. It's perfectly okay to modify your sets and everyone does it with time. Last up, I wanna cover what's by far your most helpful resource in the middle of the game for figuring out what you need to do, learning information, or trying to adapt your game plan. Use your damn map. The minimap gives you information on exactly what areas you control and the opponents control. You can notice different paint trails from things like rollers or brushes at the start of the map. You can check your opponent's gear and see what they're running if there's things like ninja squid to look out for. You can see how split up your team is. And if opponents are damaged, you can even see them directly on the map. The minimap is basically free information for things you can't see with your normal camera. So it's good to open it and to check what's going on, especially if you're dead or coming back from spawn. I would make it a habit to look at it at the start of a match or whenever you're dead, and if you're not sure what to do in the middle of a game, don't be afraid to check it. Get in the habit of looking at your map and taking in that information, and it'll give you a much better idea of what's going on in the game. That's gonna be it for this video. I'm working on the top five biggest mistakes, which are habits I see a lot of people do. But outside of that, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.